now time to look into those two big questions of the day. How your body gets the phosphorus from the food and what happens with that phosphorus in the body. To answer these questions, we're moving on from the game show quiz to the demonstration portion of our show. Hey, this will be fun. <laughs> Here we go. How our bodies work is amazing when you think about it. We see this and say, wow, looks yummy. Our biomechanical machine body sees this and says, hey, more stuff I can process to get phosphorus and other vitamins and minerals I need. Now when it comes to the processing of food to get at phosphorus, three sets of body parts come into play. The bones, the stomach and intestines, or what we in the business call the gastrointestinal tract, and the kidneys. Now, here's how these three work together in a perfect world, when everything is healthy. The food goes into the stomach and the intestines, where it all gets broken down, and you can think of them as your body's own built-in food processor. When the phosphorus is extracted from the food, it travels through the blood to the bones and all the other cells in your body. See, blood goes to every cell, so does phosphorus. Now, when the phosphorus-carrying blood flows to the kidneys, something amazing happens. The kidneys actually pull out all the excess phosphorus the body doesn't need. The body's normally functioned systems are so well-tuned that they keep a stockpile of phosphorus that stays within a constant range and then discards the excess by flushing it out through the body's liquid waste. Eat a little, there's enough in the stockpile. Eat a lot, the body takes what it needs and eliminates the extra. Eat a whole lot, and I mean, you know, load up on the chow, the body will take just what it requires to keep the stockpiles where they need to be and then just flushes out the rest. Truly amazing. Now, while that sinks in, let me just add this important piece of information. When it comes to phosphorus, and in particular, too much phosphorus, the main way the body uses to eliminate the excess is through the kidneys. Too much phosphorus, hey, give it to the kidneys. They'll get rid of the bulk of it. And so we come to the important part of our story. Take the kidneys out of the loop, and what happens? The body has no way to naturally get rid of the excess phosphorus. Now, here is the makings of a big challenge you as a dialysis patient face. What happens to be one of the most plentiful minerals in the food we eat? <laughs> yeah, you guessed it, phosphorus. And remember, even in the good old days when everything was working right, the body took in way more phosphorus than it needed. It just never became an issue because the kidneys were there to take what was needed and throw out the rest. But that's no longer the situation when you're on dialysis. So, how do you meet the challenge of getting rid of excess phosphorus without your kidneys? Well, you might be tempted to rely on your dialysis machine and treatments. The thing is, your dialysis machine may be called an artificial kidney, but it's not able to do everything your kidneys did. It's truly remarkable what this machine can do, but guess what it can't do so well? That's right. It's not able to remove phosphorus very well. Only about 20%. The science just isn't there yet to remove more. So, what are your options? The phosphorus just can't build up in your body, and that causes a whole lot of problems you don't even want to think about. And let me tell you, those problems can be percolating even when you're feeling great. Now, the best option for helping to remove the phosphorus when your kidneys can no longer do the job is you. Yeah, you can now play the most important role in a process your kidneys used to do. And the good news about this new role you can play is that it really isn't all that difficult. There's basically just four things you need to do. Faithfully go to your dialysis treatments. Carefully limit your phosphorus intake to the food you eat. Control the amount of phosphorus your body has to process with pills called binders. And work with your dietitian to help keep your phosphorus within the recommended range of 3.5 to 5.5. We're going to spend the rest of this program going into each one of these things in more detail. Now, let's take a look at the first one by going on a little field trip.